no one expected that he would step down, having said he would stay. Yeah, but 51.4 was unattainable. I mean, you, you simply cannot stay as party leader when almost half of your party does not want you there. So, yes, he had set a low bar. Yes, he said as long as he got 50 percent, he would he would stay on. But I think that was just chatter beforehand. There's no way he could stay on. What I found interesting is he said he's resigning as leader. I didn't hear him say resigning as premier. So I think he remains as premier throughout the leadership race, which could be months long. Okay, so Laurie, your reaction to the news that he's decided to act, at least leave as party leader? Yeah, and so given the fact that there's an election coming up in just you know around a year's time, if he's going to stay as premier, I mean, I'm not surprised by that necessarily. The province needs a premier, and you know that he, there's no reason that he can't do that. There's nothing illegitimate or unconstitutional about that or anything else. But it does put quite a bit of pressure on the party to expedite a leadership process so that the leader, the new leader, gets a chance to get people to get to know. Uh, him, her, them before the next election kicks off in earnest. And I can say from my perspective as a Nova Scotian, that was really tough when Stephen McNeil decided to leave. Um, you know, ha the leader Liberals had a leadership, put Ian Rankin in place, and he hardly had any time before he was going to go to election. And so it's a really, it's a really short timeline. But again, I think, you know, Jason Kenney saw the writing on the wall. 51%, as as Dwayne says, is not enough at all. And it was only, only going to keep getting worse on a daily basis. And so so, I mean, no one wants to see that. Okay, Tom Mulcair is also standing by. Let's bring him into the conversation. Tom, uh, can he stay on as premier? I mean, I guess he can. The rules don't uh, stop him from doing that. But do you think there'll be pressure from within the party for him to give that up? Well, the constitutional rule, as I understand it, is that the leader of the party with the largest number of seats that has the confidence of the House is the premier or the prime minister, depending on what level of government you're talking about. I find it very surprising if someone who has just been turfed or chosen to step down, but you know he's no longer the leader of that party because he's left, is somehow going to have the legitimacy. Let's not worry about the constitutionality necessarily alone, but the legitimacy to take massive decisions in one of the largest economies in Canada and one of the largest provinces. I think that he'd be putting himself in an almost impossible position, to be honest. I don't know that there's a precedent for this. I can remember when Andrew Scheer, uh, of course, was forced to step down from the Conservatives. He said, well, I'll stay on as leader until my successor is chosen. Stéphane Dion did the same thing with the Liberal Party federally, but he wasn't the Prime Minister of Canada any more than Andrew Scheer was. So here, it is, I believe, uh, uncharted territory. I can't think of a prior example like this. And I, I, I don't think it would be legitimate for him to stay on, frankly, under our con constitutional order. Okay, so Dwayne, let me ask you to add a level to this. This is a man who has come under intense scrutiny, and a lot of the division came as a result of pandemic and restrictions denounced and restrictions removed. We're not through the pandemic. We don't know if there's going to be another wave in the fall, another wave in the winter. If he stays on as premier, he faces a whole nother round of what's to come with that. Dwayne, Yo, you're, you're, sorry, you're speaking to me. You. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, no, I was going to just respond to Thomas Mulcair and said uh, when Ralph Klein resigned, he remained as premier until Ed Stelmack was chosen as leader in a very long race. Likewise, when Ed Stelmack resigned, he remained as premier until Alison Redford um, um, re replaced him. So there are precedents uh, of premiers doing that. And in Kenny's case, he stepped, or sorry, in, in Ralph Klein's case, he stepped down after losing a leadership review at 55%. So the, the precedent is there that Kenny can remain as premier. Uh, while a leadership race uh, occurs. And I also agree with Lori, the timing is very quick, but Ontario did that when uh, Patrick Brown stepped in, stepped down and Doug Ford uh, replaced him in a leadership race, except Brown wasn't premier at the time.